The first bone we're going to start with today is the ulna. And there are two bones that are in your forearm right here. Um, the one that's on your thumb side here is known as the radius. And the one that's on your pinky side is your ulna. Easiest way for me to remember this is that you think but your thumb and your and your pinky, one of them's bigger around. Your thumb would have a bigger radius, you know, from the center than your pinky would. So radius, thumb side. You can also think uh, ulna, pinky, it points up, UP, okay? Um, and so here they are. Now, which one's bigger? Because it's not, it's not a great way to remember them because the radius is wide at one end and then kind of small at the, at the other end, uh, at the proximal end. And the ulna is kind of big at the elbow and much, much smaller at the wrist. So they, they're both big in different parts. But starting with the ulna, the ulna, and I, as I, I may have mentioned on yesterday's lecture, uh, is that the ulna makes the hinge joint with, uh, with the humerus. And it, it looks kind of like a fist punching a snake in the mouth. Like, here, here's the snake there, and then, psh, right there. Uh, you can see the thumb's kind of out to the side on the fist there. But on the, uh, on the ulna, there is this bump back here, which is called the olecranon process. That's the bump on the back of your elbow, if you feel your elbow. And it fits into the olecranon fossa fits into the olecranon fossa. On the anterior side, the bottom of the little snake jaw right there, is the coronoid process, and it fits into the coronoid fossa on the humerus. Now, this radius here is just kind of sitting beside that. I mean, it rolls up and down with this, but it doesn't create the joint. The hinge is created by the ulna grabbing a hold of the humerus, but the radius sits not so much idly by, but it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with this hinge joint. But the radius does something really cool, and I showed some of you guys this in, in, your, uh, in your groups yesterday, that the radius, when you Take your hands like this. That what, what position is this, class? Supine. Supine. We're going to pronate our hands and do like this. When you do that, your ulna doesn't move. It can't. It's locked into the hinge. But your radius spins over the top of your ulna like that every single time you pronate your hands. So that, that bone has the ability to spin, which is part of the reason that it has its shape right here. But going back to the ulna here, a couple more parts that you need to know. Shaft is just a long part of any bone here. The shaft of the ulna, here's the shaft of the radius. I gave you another word yesterday, the diaphysis is the same word as shaft. Now the head of the ulna is here at the wrist. You can see there is kind of a little rounded portion right here. That rounded portion is the head of the ulna. Now on the other side here, and you can feel this, you can palpate this, on, feel on the back side of your wrist here, there's kind of a bump that sticks up there. That is the styloid process of the ulna. Styloid process. Now back to the radius. The head of the radius is at the other end. And to me, it looks a little bit like, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie E.T. Like, you know, I'll draw a little face on him if it'll let me. Yeah, nope, it won't let me. Pencil, there we go. This is big E.T. eyes right there, you know. And his E.T. nose right there is the number. And his little smile. Okay, I think this looks like E.T.'s head. Do you see that? So, E.T.'s head is the head. Below that, below the head is the what? Neck. That's correct. Now, underneath this, here is a bump. See that bump? Kind of like E.T.'s little belly kind of stuck out there. See that? That is called the radial tuberosity. Tuberosity is another word for bump. Okay? This one, again, why do these bumps stick out, guys? What's their purpose? I heard somebody say it. They connect to muscles, that's correct. And the bicep attaches to this one right here, radial tuberosity. Okay. And now this is the shaft of the bone. 
and that gets us down here to the wrist again and again the radius makes up a majority of these two bones at the wrist if you feel toward the thumb side here you'll feel a bump stick out here as well that is your styloid process of the radius styloid process of the radius okay that gets us to this next group of bones right here connected to this and this is kind of messed up how I have it all together here. Some of these are paper clips. Um, in your wrist, is like it looks like someone took a handful of rocks and kind of shoved it in there. All of them have a real specific purpose that give you the dexterity and the ability to move your hands and such. But this right here, these bones collectively are called carpal bones. Carpal bones. Each one has a name, but for this class, I'm not concerned that you learn those names. You know, if you go to take gross anatomy in medical school or you study to be a uh, you know physical therapist you'll learn all those names of these guys but carpal bones now you have similar bones in your foot they're called tarsal bones easy way for me to remember it is you get your hand smashed in a car door you would step in tar okay a terrible day either way but that's how I remember it so carpal bones in your wrist you guys ever heard of anything that has to do with carpal before? Carpal tunnel syndrome. Good. Now, everybody has a carpal tunnel. So it's like, I've got carpal tunnel. Well, technically everyone does. Okay. If you look through here, the carpal bones make this sort of U shape right there. Okay. And traveling through this U shape, I guess flex your fingers like this in, in, your, in your hand. Okay. And you can feel stuff move through here. Okay, those are the tendons. You've got a bunch of tendons. In fact, grab your forearm for just a second here and clench your fist. Most of the muscles that control the greater movements of your hand and fingers are all the way back here. But they send all these tendons through the carpal tunnel right through here. The trouble is that there is a ligament that attaches across the top here of the carpal tunnel to contain all of them, which wouldn't be an issue except that there are some important nerves that run through there as well. People that do repeated motions with their hands, who work with their hands a lot or type a lot, and things like that, those tendons can become inflamed. And when they become inflamed, they put pressure on the what? What did I say was running through here that's important? nerves and so the hands start to have have pain and uh, there's numbness and tingling and all kinds of stuff so the way they relieve this pressure is they actually go in and they cut that ligament that attaches across the side and it relieves all the pressure of it yeah really simple procedure a lot of money too okay so uh so those are carpals is the wrist and then these guys here are metacarpals now, what do you think the bones of the foot would be called then? Metatarsals, Metatarsals is correct. Good. So, uh, so here's the bones of the palm of your hand, basically, is what, what the metacarpals are. And they're numbered 1 through 5, starting with the thumb. Okay. So this is right hand, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Uh, and they're the bones of the palm of your hand. Now, this one is particularly special, number one, because it has the ability to do this. It allows you to oppose your thumb to the other fingers, which allows you to grip things and grab tools and so on and so forth. So, now, we're, we got to the end of this here, and um, you can see this model is struggling a bit. It's missing most of the fingers there. All of your fingers and toes, their name are, are phalanges. That's the plural. Now, the singular of that I've written here, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's called phalanx, P-H-A-L-Y-N-X, phalanx, phalanx. And there are basically only three names of these. Of course, you name the finger the number based on which... Uh, which metacarpal it's associated with. So finger number one is your thumb. Uh, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Now, just like we learned before, proximal, middle, and distal. Your proximal phalanx is the one that's closest to the body. Proximal. The one that's furthest from the body is distal. Okay? And the one that's in the middle is seriously just middle. So 
proximal, middle, distal. Now your thumb only has two. What are they, gang? Proximal and distal. Your toes are named the exact same way, okay? Uh, and and uh, all your toes have three. Even the little tiny one at the end has three bones in it. They're really small, but they've got three bones. But which one only has two? The big toe only has two. Okay, so that's it for this little section.